Hey guys, thank you for watching DataVids. This video today is on how to send or how to set up your SQL Server Express to send emails without using C Sharp or Java or any of those, just directly from SQL Server from your stored procedure. We'll be doing this in SQL Express and follow along. Take care. All right, guys. So first, we're going to execute. Uh, well, we're going to execute a few stored procedures, but first, we're going to execute this one called sysmail underscore add underscore profile underscore sp. And you can find it in the msdb database. Go to programmability, stored procedures, system stored procedures, and you scroll down to dbo.sysmail. And you'll see all these stored procedures here. All these dbo.sysmail, add account, add profile, delete, edit, help, et cetera, et cetera. We're just going to execute a few of these and then you will be able to send emails. Okay. So you got two parameters required, profile name and description. And basically you could put whatever you want in there. As long as you remember what that profile name is, I recommend don't use any spaces, underscores or special characters. Um, and then make sure in your top left, if you don't have a using statement above your execute, then go to your top left of the screen and go on up to MSDB. That's the database that this stored procedure exists in. Highlight F5 execute. There we go. Let's do the next one. Now you need to identify what the user account is and what the login is that you're going to use. Because our next stored procedure that we're going to execute looks like this. We're going to create a user for a login. Now, I'm not telling you that you have to use SQL Server authentication or Windows authentication to connect to SQL Server because either one works. And if you're doing Windows authentication, which is Active Directory, however, you're going to put your domain name backslash your username that you use to log into Windows uh, if that's how you're connecting to SQL Server. Okay, that's the example I'll do here. But just know if this is a SQL Server authentication, all this will just be replaced with just your username. B Jones or whatever it is. Okay. So go ahead and put that login there and then go to your SQL server and go to security, not in the database. Look on the left side of my screen. If you can see, it's kind of small. It goes databases, then security. There's another security within the database. Forget that. We're going to this security then choose logins and make sure you see that login there. Otherwise this step's going to fail. You got to pick the correct login. So in my case, there's that domain name and username, which matches here. Now I'm going to create a username. This username in my case, um, I'm just going to use CC just to keep it consistent. That doesn't match <clears throat> anything that I have already. I don't think so. I'm just going to execute this first part F5 completed successfully. Now the second part, we're going to execute the stored procedure once again in the MSDB database, which is one that comes to SQL server SP underscore add role member, no spaces. Uh, and that's going to take two parameters here. Go ahead and take the, if you did Windows Authentication, Active Directory, take just the username without the domain, drop it in here as a second parameter, and go ahead and execute SP add role member. There we go. Up next, let's go ahead and configure our actual email account. Now this is using Gmail. And there is something we're going to have to go into Gmail itself and do. It's a really quick thing uh, to allow less secure apps, which is basically any app, C Sharp or SQL or something else that sends emails. But for right now, let's just configure this here in SSMS. So we're going to execute another store procedure called sysmail underscore add underscore account underscore SP. We're going to set up all the account information. Um, now I will be changing my password, guys, so don't try to use my email account. But what you need, these are the required parameters here. Account underscore name, which I just put date of its email account, email underscore address. Um, I just put uh, the username for that, which is date of its dev display underscore name, which is the name that will display. And you'll, you'll recognize all this when you send your first email, of course, because you've got to go to the properties on the email and see who it's from, who it's to, all that sort of thing. Come back in here and adjust it. And on that note, there is another start procedure just like add account but edit if you go back under that list under programmability you'll find it uh, we will talk about that here in a little bit so anyways go ahead and populate all these variables um, you can pause this video and fill it out your own way if you're using gmail then you're always going to use that port 587 smtp and be smtp.gmail.com 
Um, hopefully you find something more interesting to put in description than what I did here, but it's not important. Uh, password does show in plain text here, but it's not going to be stored in plain text in the database. So just delete this script after you execute it and you won't have to worry about it anymore. Turn on SSL. All right, I'm going to highlight this and press F5. Excellent. Now let's go ahead. Uh, we have one more store procedure to run where we're going to link this account to the profile, the two things we created, the profile and the account. After that, we're going to go to Gmail and do that setting I talked about. All right. Next door procedure, sysmail underscore add underscore profile account underscore SP. First parameter, profile underscore name. And here we're going to put in the profile. Let me scroll up. That profile that we did in the very first step, data viz email profile. Next, we're going to put account and underscore name, which is data viz account, which we got right here under the just one previous to this that we executed. That's for procedure. And then sequence number is just, you know, kind of order of operations, priority. Uh, if, if multiple things are in there, which one gets executed out of the queue first for priority? It's a priority queue. So highlight it all, hit F5. And that was easy, right? Now it's all linked up, set up, ready to go, I believe. We won't know if we missed a step till we try to send an email. Let's go ahead now and configure our Gmail since this video is specific to Gmail. But as you can tell, most of these settings are going to work with most email types. I'm in an email account here that I just created. Now, I am going to tell you this setting is kind of buried. So uh, I had to Google it myself. Um, and I usually can figure things out with settings and whatnot, but I actually had to. So let me show you because it's where you'd expect it would be over here in settings um, for your email, but is, is, or up here with the gear icon, sorry, settings. But it's not there because it's not really under the email settings. It's under the account settings. So if you click on your uh, picture or your letter icon, however you have your email set up there, then you're going to go to manage your Google account. Once you're in manage your Google account, on the left side, you're going to see security right underneath data and personalization. Click security. Now, it says your account's protected, yada, yada, all kinds of secure information about your password. Don't worry about any of that. Just scroll on down until you see about three quarters of the way down, less secure app access right here. And it says off. Go ahead and turn that on. Turn it on. Great. Now you should be able to use this account to send email from SQL Server. Let's go back to SSMS. Scroll down, make a new line here. Now I'm going to do reconfigure and go. So what reconfigure does is it's just saying any settings that I've changed in the database that may or may not require the database to be restarted can just be applied now without restarting the, the service. Um, I hit F5 to run it. If you did want to restart the service, you know, it's fine. Just go to start, run services.msc, look for uh, MS SQL Server, SQL Server, and just stop and start the service. But a lot of times you're going to be doing this on an account where users have databases and applications that use those databases and it's not an option, of course, right? So that's what this reconfigure is about. I earlier promised you guys that I would show you how to edit that profile if you made a mistake. Well, I didn't mean to, but I actually made a mistake. This is the perfect time to, to show you that. So basically it's the same as above, exact same parameters, everything. Um, execute sysmail underscore add account underscore SP that we did. Well, in my case, I did the wrong email address. I did datavidsdev at gmail.com. Uh, so what I really meant to do was um, to do a datavids50 at gmail.com, like I have here, datavids50, not datavidsdev. And so I'm running this start procedure to modify the account that I already created. So let's go highlight that, hit F5 to run it. Wonderful. Now let's go ahead and send an email. All right, here goes. Last store procedure if we did everything right, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times <laughs> Just because you're uh, Think you got it all doesn't mean you did so exec to execute store procedure once again It's in the msdb database. We're doing sp underscore send underscore db mail And if you hover over it, it gives it could show you all the parameters that you need You don't need to go to the documentation But if you really wanted to you could just click on db mail with left click and then hit F1 on your keyboard. And it would take you to the Microsoft documentation. Anyways, 
So I'm choosing now all the parameters. So um, I like to put them all below like this. Recipients, copy recipients just means CC. Obviously there's more parameters than what I've shown on multiple of these sort of procedures. I just put out the minimum so you could send emails. So there's BCC and all sorts of stuff. But uh, CC is pretty common, so I put that here, copy recipients. Uh, let's put in a subject, hello from DataVids, body, I love you, I love you. All right, and then uh, profile name from above, from above in the script when we, we built the profile name, is just DataVids email profile. So let's highlight that, and I'm basically sending it from this email address to this email address, so we can just go to that email if this works. Now hit F5. Uh, let's see, server blocked access to the stored procedure. This actually turns out to be uh, quite a simple fix. It just means we did skip a step. So I will bring that right up here above our send mail and paste it. I'm not running all this script every single time. I'm just highlighting. And in SSMS, it only runs what you highlight. So this is the fix right here. I need to turn on the configuration for this database to allow it to send database mail via stored procedure. So I'm giving it the flag one which is like turned on and then reconfigure so we don't have to restart it. So as I was saying, if you highlight a section, hit F5, it just runs that section. Um, you know, it's not going to run everything that's in this file. You guys probably already know that, but just in case. So now we could try to run this again, highlight, run it. It says one's been queued. In the case that you're not receiving the email, even though it looks like it's queued and should have been sent, you might want to see what's going on. So in this case, you can execute these series of commands here. Uh, SB underscore configure show advanced, you know, for like show advanced options. One flag turn on, reconfigure, and then run it again. Underscore SP, I'm sorry, SP underscore configure without any parameters. Then after you run that, right below it, you can do sysmail underscore help underscore Q underscore SP and tell it you want to look at the Q type of mail. Lastly, if none of this gives you any useful information, you can always run select star from sysmail event log. And that's actually going to show you the history here. It's like a, a log. In my case, it couldn't send it because there's an issue with the email account. So for me to clean up the errors, all I had to do is get the correct uh, username and password. One thing to pay attention to is that the username should not have the at sign at Gmail after it. Just the username. The full email address goes up here where it says email address. All right, well, we won't waste your time with that. Let's now go to the results because it is working now. And switching back over to our Gmail, finally, we get to see the message. Hello from DataVids. I love you. Isn't that the kind of email we all want to receive? All right, well, hope that was helpful. We don't always want to send email from a stored procedure. Usually it's from an application or better yet from an email service like SendGrid or one of those. But this could be helpful because sometimes you've got logic that's out there in your stored procedure that just doesn't make sense to move into your application. Um, have a great day. Bye.